Hello everyone, let's talk about the general antiderivative of the function cosine of ax, where a is not equal to zero. First, let's talk about what happens when a is equal to zero. If a is equal to zero, then we have cosine of zero x. Cosine of zero x is really just cosine of zero, and that's one. And so our function becomes a constant function, and it's not a trick function anymore. That's not what we want to talk about in this video. Okay, so now we are going to assume that a is not equal to zero, and then we want to find the general antiderivative of the function. So just first, just one thing that's really important to remember is that when we differentiate a trig function with a linear function that's inside the trig function, what happens is that we are going to differentiate the outer function, which is the trig function, and then we multiply by the derivative of the linear function because that's what the chain rule tells us, right? We need to differentiate the outer function, plug in the inner function, and then we multiply by the derivative of the inner function. And when we differentiate the inner function, because it's a linear function, so what happens is that we are going to generate that a in front of our function. And so for example, let's do some scratch work just to show you what actually is happening here. So. Let's say we try to, let's say we have a function, um, for example, sine of 3x. And then when we take the derivative of this function, you see what's going on here? We are going to get cosine, right? Because the derivative of sine is cosine. And then we are going to just copy the inner function. And then we need to multiply by the derivative of the inner function. So that's three. That's what I mean by generating this extra factor of three due to the chain rule. And so now the question is, what if we do not have any number in the front? And so just for you to know, when we take the derivative, we are going to generate something that's in front of the x. And do you see that they're actually the same number right here? So those two numbers are the same. Now, the question is, how do we get rid of this three? And if we're starting, okay, so if we're starting with y prime and we do not have that extra number, right? We do not have that three. Then we are starting with this function, cosine of three x, Then the question is, what is this? What is our original function? Now, to go from here, this expression to our cosine of three x, how do we get rid of the three? We actually can multiply both sides by, I mean, not both sides, but we can actually multiply this by one over three so that we can get to the cosine three x without any other numbers attached to this expression right here. Okay, so basically when we go from this expression to this expression, we, are, we can actually multiply by one over three, which is actually the reciprocal of whatever number that's attached to the x. Okay, now, and then you may say, what should I do for the original function? We actually can do the same thing. We can multiply by one over three. So you see what's going on here? If we just multiply by one over three, then we can get the antiderivative for the cosine of three X. And so what is that? That's actually one over three and then times our function, which is sine of three X. Do you see what's going on here? If we did not have any number in front of the sine 3x, then our y prime would be three times the cosine 3x. But if we have a one over three in front of our sine 3x, then our derivative would actually be just cosine 3x without that three. It's really because when we have the one third right here, that will actually cancel out the extra three that's caused by the chain rule. So in this case, we actually can see a pattern right here. 
as long as this number in front of the x is not zero, then what we can do is that we can just multiply by the reciprocal of whatever number that's in front of the x. Then we'll have the antiderivative. So that's how we take care of the chain rule. And so usually I call this process of reversing the chain rule without using the u substitution. And for more complicated problems, we usually want to use the substitution method to do it. But for simple problems like this, it's unnecessary to do the u substitution. Okay, so now what is the general formula for finding the, in, uh, the antiderivative for this cosine of ax? The antiderivative, which is represented by capital F, is actually sine. It's really because the derivative of sine is cosine, so the antiderivative of cosine would be sine. And then we do not really change anything that we plug into the trick function, so whatever that's inside the trick function that we have in our original function would also show up in the antiderivative. So it's sine of ax right here. What do we need to put in the front? According to our example right here, then we are going to put one over a here, which is the reciprocal of the coefficient of the x. And then of course we can add the constant. And then we should actually do a quick check to verify that this actually works. So let's just do some work to verify that. And then again, this is still just more scratch work here. So let me just do more scratch work here just to verify. Now let's say our F, capital F, is equal to one over A, and then sine of AX plus C, okay? Now what is F prime? F prime is actually our lowercase f, and then when we take the derivative, we are going to you now just leave the one over a. That's due to the constant multiple rule. We do not touch any constant that we have, right? And then we are going to get what? We are going to differentiate this function. So when we differentiate this function, it will become cosine of ax. And then the chain rule tells us that we need to differentiate the ax, which will give us the a. And then the constant, what happens to the constant? The constant will become zero. Okay, so now let's do some simplifying right here. You see that this a and this one over a will cancel each other out. So you're going to get one when we multiply them together. And remember that we assume that a is not equal to zero, right? So this is defined, this is a number. And so the a and the a will get canceled. And so now if you're writing down the final expression right here by cleaning up the whole expression, then we are just going to get cosine of ax. And that's exactly what we have right here. Is that okay? So that's our general formula. And then now let me show you a few short examples just to demonstrate how we can apply this formula. And actually there was a similar formula for um, the general antiderivative for sine of ax, but I'm not going to spend the time showing that here. You can figure it out by doing some, a little bit of the scratch work and then it's going to be almost the same thing except that we are gonna get cosine and then there was a minus sign that, that will be involved in there. Okay, so now let me erase the scratch work And then let me show some examples. So here's one example. Let's say our function is cosine of, let's say 4x. Then what is the antiderivative? It's going to be what, sine, right? Because when we differentiate the sine, we are going to get the cosine. Right, don't change the argument of the function, so we get the 4x. And then we need to multiply by the reciprocal of this number, and then we add the constant. Isn't that really simple? And then let's try another one. 
let's say our function is cosine of let's say 3 over 5 x and then capital F which is the antiderivative would be sine of 3 over 5 okay so in general the process is to just think about what is what function that when you take its derivative will give you the cosine and in this case it would be the sine and so what do we need to multiply in front of this uh, sine function that will be again it will be the reciprocal of whatever that's in front of the x so the reciprocal would be phi over three and then plus the constant easy stuff right so let's just try one more and then i will end the video So as long as we have an, um, as long as we have a linear function that's inside the cosine function, then we can actually apply this rule right here. And so let's say this time I'm going to have a cosine of, <clears throat> let's say two x plus three. And do you see that that's still a linear function? Except that. Um, we do get a constant that's being added to our original AX. And so what's going on here? Our antiderivative will still be the sine. As you know that we differentiate the sine, we'll get the cosine. And then we are going to just keep the same stuff inside the function. And then do you see what's going on in the front? We are going to get one over Remember, it's going to be 1 over whatever that's in front of the x. So that whole fraction gives you the reciprocal of the coefficient of the x. In this case, it would be 1 over 2. And then you, you can see that it actually doesn't really matter what this constant is. If it's a 10, then it doesn't really change whatever that you put in the front. If it's 1,000, it doesn't change. It's still 1 over 2 right here because the number in front of the x is 2. And so we are adding the constant. Is that good? And then you can verify by differentiating this function. And when you do the chain rule, when you apply the chain rule, and when you are finished with the differentiating the outer function, and then when you differentiate the inner function, what's going on here? We are going to get the derivative of the 2x plus 3. That's actually just a 2, which will cancel out with this 1 over 2 here. So the 3 does not matter because when you differentiate the 2x plus 3, the 3 will disappear. So we can actually come up with a gen more general formula than this one by writing ax plus b in this expression right here. So I can write it down for you. So the general... antiderivative of the function cosine of ax plus b, okay, where a, again, it cannot be zero in this case, is going to be what? It's going to be sine of ax plus b. So as you can see that we are just still going to copy all the exact same stuff from the cosine function. But we are going to multiply by the reciprocal of the coefficient of the x, and then plus the constant. And a and b are both real numbers, but there is no restriction on the b. OK, so that's it for this problem. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and then give me some support. Please leave me some comments, ask me questions, I will respond to them. And then also please check out my other videos. I think they are fun to watch. Thank you for watching. And then see you next time.